Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the North Central Washington MVP interview series brought to you by Career Connect Washington and the Apple STEM Network. I'm your host, Carrie Horning, Career Connected Learning Specialist with the NCESD 171. My guest for today's episode is Thomas Stredwick, Senior Manager of Employee Experience with Grant County PUD. And I'll start off just by saying welcome, Thomas. Hey, thanks, Carrie. Good to be with you. All right. Good to have you here. Well, let me take care of a little bit of housekeeping and then we'll get this thing rolling. So uh, our goal is simple to introduce our community partners throughout North Central Washington to one another. And a win today looks like each of you leaving with a greater understanding of the work that's being done all around you. So grab your lunch, sit back and get ready for an extra dose of professional nourishment. So I have been fortunate enough to partner, uh, you know, prior to today with Thomas. And I just want to say, let's talk a little bit about playing up and playing outside of your game. So I was less nervous about the 100 seniors that we were speaking to uh, than I was about sharing the stage with this guy. Um, you may be familiar with Thomas. He's a local guy, local kid, graduated from Afreda, um, also graduated from Gonzaga. Um, but he also has quite a following on LinkedIn as he talks about coaching and learning and life on that LinkedIn profile. Um, and I want to say that if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, there are wonderful anecdotes that um, kind of get you thinking about life and your role, your reactions, and maybe even your interactions. So it's really solid content. I want to say check that out. And I'm super excited to have you here, Thomas. Um, thank you again. And are you ready to kick this off? Yeah, I'm ready to have a conversation. It'll be fun. All right, let's do it. So let's start off with, you are at the Grant County PUD. So tell us, what is the Grant County PUD? What is the PUD? So I I do, I have the good fortune of working here for Grant PUD. I've been here about 14 years. And um, it's interesting, at first glance, when people think of a public utility district, a PUD, they think of an energy company. And that's that's, in an essence, who we are. But we're so much more than that as well. So from generating renewable clean energy, that, that's obviously the bread and butter, but there's also poles and wires and there's fish habitat and hatchery programs. There's high-speed fiber optic network services that we're using probably right now to communicate with each other. Uh, there's, there's so many facets of the work that we do, cultural resources and the partnership, the relationship that we have with the Wanapum Band of Priest Rapids. Um, We've been around for over 80 years, formed in 1938 by a vote of the people. And the great thing about working here is that we were formed by local residents and continue to exist, focusing on serving local residents. I love that. You know, it's every time we do these these podcasts, the little MVP interviews, um, you know, it's usually with a community partner who's out there. We all know, you know, oh, yeah, I know Grant County PUD, but do we really know Grant County PUD? So we we may pay our monthly bills. We may hear about or maybe we use the, the dams and uh, or not the dams, but the recreational areas. Uh, but do we really know? So there's so much going on there. Um, what, what does that entail in terms of employment around the community? How many do you know off the top of your head how many employees work? Uh, from our area for the PD? Yeah, I think we ballpark about 750 to 800. And and the really cool thing about that is that these aren't all just engineers, right? These are, you know, we've got archaeologists on staff, biologists on staff, lands and recreation professionals, then your overhead general administrative functions as well. That I, for me, part of the reason why I keep coming to work here is because it really is, from my perspective, one of the coolest jobs to have. You know, where else do you get to work with so many different uh, professionals in so many different lanes. It's, it's pretty exciting. I love that you said that. So, and I'll thank you for it because oftentimes some of our audience includes teachers who are sharing this out with their students. And it really seems to kind of been a focus this last, uh, this last series or round of MVP interviews. And it's so good for our students to hear that, that, you know, you might drive by a John Deere dealership or a Pape dealership and think that you have to crank a wrench, but you don't. You might drive by the PUD and think that, you know, you have to be driving around in a truck and you don't. There are so many different careers within every single uh, genre of work. It's really great to hear you say that. So um, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. But let's let's kind of switch gears here. Let, let's talk a little bit about you and how did you come to work at the PUD? 
You know, for me, I was born and raised here in the Columbia Basin, um, and absent a few years where my wife and I were finishing up school in Spokane, this is home for us. Um, I come from generations of farmers here in the, the region. Uh, my wife, her and her family, they're first generation immigrants to this region. Um, and so my journey at the PUD, it's interesting because I, I knew all along when I graduated from high school, I do not want to work in agriculture. Yeah. And so I was the lone wolf. Um, yeah. Everyone else in my family works in ag. Ag is what bought me new clothes every fall when I went back to school. So I was raised in an ag environment, love ag, do not want to work in that space myself. Yeah. Thanks to the people that do. So at the PUD, um, I came here honestly kind of wandering and not really sure what I wanted to do with my professional career. So after graduating, I worked in a coffee shop for a couple of years and then I got a, an opportunity to apply for a job as a student helper at this place called the PUD that I knew nothing about. And I thought, well, this sounds kind of boring, but you know, I'm a student and I need to figure out how to pay my way through college. And um, fortunately, as a student, um, the PUD offers a student helper program and it's basically a paid internship. That time that I had as a student helper in our uh, public affairs department at the time is where I was working. For me, that was such a generative experience. For me, it was where I found purpose and passion. And ultimately, I ended up changing my um, stated major in college because of the experience I had in public affairs. So I went on to get an uh, undergrad in applied communications from Gonzaga because I was just so enthralled with this world that exists in the public affairs marketing space. Um, so it really was. I, I was a student helper here at my wife. She wasn't at the time, but she was also a student helper here. So this is where I met the woman that would be my wife one day. Yeah, yeah, so I love that. Introduction. So I love that you found, a, you know, a passion there. And I have to ask, because it's something we talk to the students and, and to, you know, business partners and teachers about all the time, mentorship. Was there somebody that stood out to you that, that kind of, you know, helped flip that switch? Or was it just the work? I think it was a combination of the two and it was probably more having really solid mentors and they were, they didn't have that in their job description. They didn't have that as um, a title outside their door, but it was something that organically happened. I came into the department in a time when the individuals that were there had been there for years and they were really seasoned and they had that great blend of character and competence and they just took time to pour into me. And so uh, that's something in all of the jobs I've had early on in my career that I was super grateful for, didn't realize how fortunate I was at the time, but now looking back, realize that I really am the product of people that were just willing to care. Mm. Oh man, I love that. That speaks right into my quality world picture. Well, I, you know what, let's, let's back up a little bit then. You talked about the student helper program that both you and your future wife, current wife, uh, participated in, and it sounds like that's still happening. Can we talk about maybe some of the other student, you know, opportunities you have there at the PUD? Yeah, the PUD from year to year, there'll be different student, student helper, student internship, apprenticeship program opportunities, just based on the needs of the the organization at any one period of time. But I know um, at the time, and this was probably 18, this was probably about 20 years ago when I was a student helper. Um, and at the time, we have student helpers that work in our transportation department. There might be student helpers that work in our finance department, our HR department. And those are just seasonal jobs that can be fit within a, a working student schedule. Um, same with the internships. Um, a lot of the interns that we have in this place are mostly they're primarily focused in the engineering space. Um, and then the apprenticeships, those are um, those are pretty varied. We have nine different apprenticeship programs in the organization. Um, they're not all active at the same time, but um, we do offer a number of opportunities for working students. Yeah, that's incredible. And I think it's something that people want to hear more about. You know, we're in career connected learning really uh, on a huge push. And, and it's not just career connected learning. It's in our um, all of our uh, academic institutions, all the, the schools, apprenticeship paid career pathway experience for our students is a number one priority and deliverable, you know, 
at this time right now. So to hear that there are multiple options uh, at the, the PUD, any of our listeners, I want to encourage you to get on online and check it out. Look on uh, the PUD website and, and dig a little deeper in there. And we'll, we'll also make sure that uh, you've got some contact information, all of our listeners, so that you can get in touch with us. But so we're talking about students. We're talking about internships and apprenticeships. So in your opinion, and, and I value your opinion, so I really am uh, you know, excited to kind of hear your answer, but if we're talking about these students getting out there, getting involved, how, how do they best prepare for the workforce? What are some of the top skills needed in your opinion for our current students? Well, I, you know, I think it's gonna depend on each person. Um, and so I'll tell you from my perspective, the things that I feel like separate good from great in terms of employees that come into the workforce and things that really give you competitive edge, no matter what your skill is. If you're in the skilled trades, if you're a CEO, if you're pushing a broom, I think one of the things that rises to the top of the list that I bumped into later on um, is learning to ask really good questions that you don't know the answer to. And that, for me, that is one of the big ones. The other one is learning how to sift through what can sometimes feel like the junk drawer of emotions, right? Like figuring yes. out how do I, I'm feeling this way in a moment. What do I do with this emotion? And what do I do when I bump into emotions at work? Yes. Those aren't necessarily things that I, uh, I've spent years studying when I went to college or had a lot of um, understanding of until I recognized the need for them. So asking really good questions, I think emotional intelligence, it's just, it's a big deal. It's portable. It doesn't matter what your job is. Um, and, it, and the other thing I think is, at least here in the Pacific Northwest, you know, some people say it's the Pacific nice West, right? Northwest. <laughs> nice. I think one of the things that can be hard is with that comes this ability or inability to have really hard conversations. So say hard things, but say them in a way that has this filter of compassion and kindness. Yes having hard conversations, that would be the third thing for me that's yeah. like, it's a non-negotiable, gotta have it. Those are amazing. I love those. Uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, I just did a soft skills clinic for a school earlier this fall and doing some of the research just to kind of update it. Um, there was a survey that said 79% of new hires that don't make it in that job that they were just hired for is due to soft skills. And those, the three that you outlined right there couldn't be more critical, uh, you know, and, and I think it's not even, I mean, you, you talk about it in your LinkedIn, when you, you share out your communications, it, that, that's not just for on the job. This is for in general life skills that will make you a better person, partner, you know, all of the above. So yeah, great, great points. I appreciate that. So on that note, because I, you know, I love doing these podcasts. I love the MVP. And I always come back to this one question and usually maybe it's a little bit later, but I think this is a great transition time. Um, that feel good question of the day, everybody who's here with us, um, or even, you know, consuming this after the fact might be doing a little bit of multitasking. Maybe they're eating lunch or maybe they're answering some emails, but the, the feel good question is really what's, you know, is there a success story that you can share with us? Um, that's been, you know, heartwarming, uh, that it's just positively impacted you, um, or maybe a local resident or another business in a unique way that stayed with you over the years. Yeah, I, I really like that question too. I think, um, the thing that stands out to me, that's kind of a, it's a heartwarming story and it's not something you're going to read about in a glossy marketing brochure. <laughs> I mean, that, the PUD, like any other organization, it's got facets and some facets are rough around the edges, right? Like no employer is perfect. But for me, the thing that I love and the reason why I've decided to stay here for the last 14 years in this organization is because of the people that exist inside of it. And I, I think maybe it has something to do with the, like the roots of this company or kind of they've grown out of the soil of Grant County, right? Like it's local yes. residents serving local residents. And I think of... Uh, there's just so many examples. We've got customer service representatives that I know of that would not want me to say their name. Yeah. But things like someone will come in to pay their bill and they don't have enough money to pay their bill. And we've got customer service representatives that pay someone's electric bill, right? We've got, oh um, I think of some of the linemen that we have here at the PUD that go out at all hours of all days in all mm -hmm. conditions. 
um, that work hard throughout the night and then show up the next day to coach my son's little league team in Ifrida. Like for me, those are the things, like we do really cool work, but we have really cool people. And yes. that is the piece for me that like, I can put up with a bunch of BS as long as I'm around people that I know really at the end of the day, care about those that they're working with. And hands down, I believe that about this place. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know what? That's half the that's half the battle right there. If you're working in a job that you love with people who maybe not so much, it really makes it difficult. But if you're working with people that have your back and have the community's back, um, that can turn the whole thing around. So that, that's a your that that's great. That's one of the best answers I think I've gotten on on this. So thank you for for sharing that. So and then can I dig a little bit deeper? Uh, is maybe your story a little bit heartwarming as well? Uh, the, the yeah, you know, I, I think so. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, the only story I know is mine. And I think I really am. Like I, I was a student in this place. I found things that I am good at while working in this place as a student. I left for a few years um, and got the opportunity to work for the American Red Cross and uh, work at a risk management company and some different cool experiences like that. But yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in a single wide trailer in Royal Slope, yeah. right? Um, no one in my family had ever gone to school before. Yeah. Uh, and when I think about my life and some of the most important things that have happened in my life, this place has been in a lot of ways, a part of it. Right. And so I, I think for me, um, yeah, I would say my, my experience with Grant is heartwarming. Again, I don't want people to call me after this and say, you're full of crap, Stradwick, but there's <laughs> days that are not wonderful, right? <laughs> yeah. By and large, in the span of my career, like I, I'm a byproduct of a company that cares about the community, so... That is amazing. And you know what? None of my listeners better be calling you and saying anything like that. They, they might have to see me in person rather than through. All right. You're going to do my life. <laughs> That's right. I got you back. So uh, I love it. Well, okay. So, yeah. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Uh, we let's see. I have many nicknames, but the intimidator might be a new one. So, <laughs> oh man. Okay, we're getting off track. So, which I love. But so, okay, we've talked a little bit about then uh, a bit about your story. But how about let's go a little bit deeper into what you're actually doing now with the PUD. Yeah. So my my job title. When I say it out loud around my family, at times they'll roll their eyes. So. <laughs> I'm the senior manager of employee experience, right? So the response is, okay, is this something that millennials have just come up with for funsies, right? Yeah. Like it's a real thing. And, yeah. and honestly, it really is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And um, the opportunity for me, I, I stood up this department, um, the employee experience function. In a lot of other organizations, they might call it the um, talent management function or talent development function. But I ultimately, at the end of the day, I get to help create clarity around the way that we lead people, train people, and treat people here in the organization. And when it comes to the reasons why people stay for the right reasons or leave organizations, odds are it has to do with the way they experience that organization. So from onboarding to performance development, learning and development, employee coaching, um, and employee exit, I am in close cahoots with our human resources function taking care of the employee life cycle, right? Because there's critical moments that I think people decide if they're going to uh, either retire in place mm -hmm. or they're going to stay and they're going to volunteer some things that you can't pay for or punish for, which is essentially what employee engagement is all about, right? Like discretionary effort. Yeah. So my goal is to help create the space and the environment that allows employees to want to volunteer that stuff that we can't pay for or punish for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I really do, I am biased, but I think I have the coolest job at Grant PUD. I probably have the coolest job in the Pacific Northwest from my perspective. Uh, hmm. But in a nutshell, that's what I, yeah. what I get to do. <laughs> do you see that? Hmm. I might have to argue with you I know. on that. I, I know. I, job too. I, I would, uh, <laughs> that could be a different podcast, Carrie. Yeah, Arguing yeah. about why we have the coolest jobs. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so I want to I want to go again. I I absolutely think it's um, a unique title. I love the description that you gave. 
but can you share with us just, and maybe this is just for me, but um, when you talk about employee from onboarding all the way through, if, if somebody's working for Grant County PUD, what's it look like when they come in and talk to you? Is that, they have an idea that they want to, you know, hey, I, I think we can do this better or, hey, I'm, I'm considering leaving because of, you know, X, Y, and Z. Is, is that the process and, and how do you handle that? Yeah, I think, again, that's where some of the skills I talked about earlier. For me, the default, like the number one most impactful thing when people come to me that I can do is listen and ask really good questions. Um, but a lot of times the things that I'm dealing with are, hey, I've been doing a job for five years and I loved it, but now I feel stuck. What do I do? I like the company, but I don't, I don't want to go. So then we have conversations around, well, what sort of development plan tools do we have in place? And what are the things that you care about? Um, and this is where it might start to feel woo woo to some people, but mm -hmm. asking things about like, what do you really value at the end of the day? Because we can move you to different jobs, but you're still gonna be unhappy if you're doing something that doesn't really nest with the things that you care about at your core. Um, and so I get to have conversations with folks about that. Um, yeah. Feedback mechanisms, you know, that's one of the things we just finished up an employee engagement survey. That's another thing. Some people may roll their eyes and say, what a royal waste of time. But I think in a good system, you need continual feedback mechanisms because if you don't pull weeds while they're small, they will take deep roots and manifest themselves in lots of weird ways that are not great for the bottom line. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we, we, we keep circling around uh, all these different life skills and soft skills. And I think it's so good for, for everyone to hear adults as well as students yes, be willing to have that tough conversation. You might not be happy in your job, but guess what? If you go have that tough conversation, you might not have to stay unhappy in that job. There might just be some changes or a different position for you. Um, you know, I always teach my kids that, like you have to be willing to ask for what you want, be prepared to hear no and know how you're going to handle that. But you're certainly not going to get it if you don't get in front of somebody and make the ask. So Good for you. I love that. I, you know, there's a, a quote from Peter Block. He said that the definition of being a grown up is being able to articulate what you want and be okay when the answer is no. Oh, I mean, yeah. and that's what, so Carrie Horning needs her own quote because that kind of sounds <laughs> like Peter Block. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't start stroking that ego. I, I, I have a very wise boss who said, if we all drop the ego, the work is better. So I, I have to, you know, I have to rattle that one a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's fun. I love having fun with this. In fact, here, here we go. I want to, I do want to have a little fun with the whole PUD electricity thing. So, um, so if electricity had a personality, what do you think it would be like? And what would be its favorite hobby in Grant County? Oh, its favorite hobby in Grant County. So I, I really love this question because I think like the way we think about our organization determines the way we show up in the midst of it, right? And so if you think about your organization like it's a machine, well, then there's parts and pieces you can get rid of, right? And that's, I don't want to work in that place. So I want to think about this company as if they were a person with a personality. So, yeah. so here's my... My attempt. So Grant Beauty, if we had a personality, I would say that we would probably be like at a party, we would be the quiet, reserved person hanging out in the back corner of the room. Mm -hmm. And we would be that unnoticed person behind the scenes that no matter what time of day, we will pick up ourselves and go drive to your house and take care of you if you need us to. But you aren't going to notice us. We're not going to be super flashy. And that, in the essence, in essence, that's really a lot of what we do. Like people don't think about energy until, you know, fibers down or powers out. Now, their hobby, I think their hobby would be like I don't know, maybe water skiing on the Columbia River in the weekends because there's, I mean, we, there's some fun stuff happening here. So they've got this edgy side of them that they don't let others see all that often. Oh yeah, extroverted introvert, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I 
like that a lot. You know, when you say water skiing, I have to agree because I moved here in 1985, did not want to stay. I was a junior in high school, met this super cute farmer and thought, okay, this, this is going to change things. But what happened before that is right when we moved into town, uh, uh, one of my, you know, heroes and mentors, uh, Bob Jacks, who used to own uh, the John Deere dealership, took me water skiing. Uh, my, our, my family was with his family down at Crescent Bar. And uh, later in life, when things took a, a turn for him, I sent him a letter and I said, you know, had you not been in your 50s and already married, I would have married you just for the pure fact that I had so much fun in this little town that I never thought I would have fun in. And then, you know, it turns out that that second guy who took me boating, I ended up, you know, locking onto and marrying him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, the the recreation in Grant County is definitely, a, a, you know, a big piece. So, okay. Uh, well, let's see here. I want to make sure that we do one thing. Uh, I always open it up to questions. If anybody who is joining us live has a question or a comment, feel free to jump in and do that. I always have to say something. So and I always love it, Kim. <laughs> Come on in. So I already follow Thomas on LinkedIn. I had to verify that as we were on here because I'm like, I know that I have heard this guy before. Um, I am amazed. Um, even though um, I have lived here over 40 years and the things that the PUD does is much more vast than what I imagined. And so when you were talking about fish hatchery programs, cultural resources, I thought, holy cow, this is like untapped out there. And um, I am very interested. I um, run the Boys and Girls Club. So I'm always interested in, you know, what can we tell our kids? What can we provide our kids that come to our club and get them interested in something different in their lives? And so um, I would love your contact information besides LinkedIn and um, reach out. And if you could come and talk to our club kids, I think that would be awesome. So um, I will uh, get that. My other thing was, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I know a transformer blew overnight and um, our power went down here. It just was a blip, but um, I know that, uh, a lot of people are thankful that uh, the PUD, the line crew is out there at one o'clock in the morning um, when there's snowstorms, whatever it is. Um, we really do appreciate that. And I think that uh, people don't tell them that often. Um, and so please convey that because, uh, you know, we are always excited when power comes back on, whether it's here at our club or anywhere else. So uh, thanks so much. And um, I've really enjoyed like all of these series, but um, this one was really an eye opener for me. So thanks very much. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Love to come hang out with you and Boys and Girls Club and the the power outage. That's just one of, I mean, it, again, it's just, it's stuff that happens. People don't notice. And no, I do like absolutely nothing to help fix that. So I work with all the people though that make that stuff happen. And I'll make sure I direct your appreciation their way. Yeah, yeah, that's a great comment, Kim. Thank you. And Thomas, we're we're running out of time. It's the one thing I always say that this goes so quickly. Uh, I feel like we might need to bump it up uh, to forty five minutes next year, but but we're actually not going to do that. I want I want to keep everybody coming back, and it, it'll, it'll give us another reason to have another conversation. So um, so I want to thank you very much for your time and for your participation. And really, I want to thank you too for teaching me. I, I mean the 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 event that we partnered on for Freda High School, I really had a great time and I learned a lot from you. You're an amazing human being and I'm honored that you came on to the MVP today. So thank you very much. Well, my pleasure. It's good to know you. Good to be with you. Thanks for the time. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody.